Hello, dear students. This is uh, Computer Science IGCSE Paper 2 Problem Solving and Programming 0478 Paper 2 Variant 1 May June 2019. Uh, through this video, we'll uh, together we'll try to solve the uh, previous material um, using the pseudocode. Let's uh, start by reading the, the problem here. The local high uh, school buses uses buses to transport students to school. Each are six bus routes labeled uh, A to F. You have conducted a survey to analyze the punctuality statistics of these buses over the four week period. The data from the survey are shown in the table. Here you have the table where you have the week is labeled by number number one referring to week one and then week two week three week four um, and then every bus route when positive numbers here um, are represent uh, representing the minutes early the bus arrived early if it's two four three three four that means the bus arrived early negative numbers represent minutes late minus 1, minus 2, minus 4, minus 10 and 0 is representing the buses uh, arrived uh, on time uh, when, whenever you solve the pseudocode for the pre-release material you need to take care of the three important bullet points here uh, since he is uh, mentioning that your program or programs must include the appropriate prompts Okay, for example, a prompt could be like printing a message to the user. Okay, showing a message to the user, prompting him to input the bus route 8, arrival minutes for bus route 8, or also the error messages and other output need to be set out clearly, understandably, that, for example, printing uh, invalid input, try again. This is an error message whenever uh, the input is uh, inappropriate. Um, also, um, the data must be validated on entry. Uh, that, uh, for example, uh, if the values to be entered are from 0 to 10, uh, that means uh, below 0 should be rejected or above 10 should be also rejected. Output messages like, for example, print the bus route C has the highest late minutes. You need to, to take care of also all variables and constants in your program and other identifiers must have meaningful names. Uh, don't use that. Do not use the variable names as X and Y uh, in your program because this will be ambiguous for you and also for the examiner. You will need to complete these three tasks. Each task must be fully tested. Okay, let's start. Um, task one here uh, is setting up the data storage for the uh, uh, the variables inside the uh, table here. Okay, we need to set up a data storage uh, for the input of the arrival minutes. So for task one, using arrays, he explicitly here mentioned that you have to use arrays. Uh, set up a system to enable data for each bus route to be entered covering each day of a four week period um, it must be possible to enter the data supplied or your own set of data using a suitable prompt as necessary for example here we'll have the days day from monday one tuesday one wednesday one thursday one friday one and then uh, the same for the next week week two week three up to till week four imagine this is like a one-dimensional array that will store the arrival minutes for bus a so we need to take the user input for example the input would be minus one for late minutes it could be positive that he, the bus arrived early it could be zero the bus arrived on time so on and so forth for the rest of the rest of the days okay 
this is an example for just for bus route uh, one okay so to input the data here inside one dimensional array we need to declare um, an array first to take those inputs okay for the first bus a so how we are going to uh, do that by using a for loop so the for example we are going to use the for loop for the count which is going to count uh, through the days from 1 to day 20 since the these are 20 days okay and don't forget to uh, end up the for loop with the next day count okay that's why you should that's how you should do to end up the loop with the next and then the day count what we'll do here we'll take the user input and insert inside the array for example the array will start with index 1 index 2 index 3 4 5 6 7 which is going to be the same as the loop counter okay and I will give a, a, a name for this array as minutes array okay and then for the index would be the same as uh, the loop counter here which is going to be day count okay what we are going to store inside the day count what we're going to store the user input okay so the day count we need to show a message to the user to input the day okay which is going to be enter the arrive into the arrival minute for bus A for example okay and then the variable will be arrive minute okay this is just an example of how we are going to take the user input okay before that we need to declare the all the variables okay we need to declare uh, the variable uh, the data structure array name which is the minutes array and also we need to declare the variable name arrive minutes okay as um, integer since the, the data are only whole numbers now as we have like uh, here like six bus routes uh, each bus will uh, have arrived minutes through 20 days required data structure variables where first we need to uh, declare an array of uh, 20 days this is the, going to be the first uh, requirement the the second thing we need also to declare an array to store the names for the six bus routes and then we need to have an array to store the 20 uh, inputs of the for uh, for each bus route here the minutes to input the minutes arrival minutes for 20 uh, days um, then we need also to take the uh, input we need to have a, have a variable to take the user input for the 20 uh, days so uh, we'll input that through the for loop at the end here we need to also to take the input for the six bus routes we need another nested for loop okay so we will start that we'll start that by declaring the uh, arrays so we declare um, days uh, of week for uh, <clears throat> 20 elements as string the data type will be string here Th that we need to store the uh, the days so we'll start by Monday one then the next days would be like this so those are are the 20 days 
Also, the second thing we need to declare the names for the six bosses. So we'll declare another array here to store the six bosses. Okay, we'll give the name identifier here for bus root of six elements, also as a string since these are all strings between double quotes. And also we need to declare a third array to store the number of 20 days as integer and this would be empty array so since this is going to be the user input and we'll give the identifier name as minutes array and then we need to have a four loop two four loops one inside another nested loop okay we'll loop through the bus root count from one to six and then we'll prompt the user to input or enter minutes positive number for early negative numbers for uh, late and zero for on time for the bus route and then we'll have here um, we'll use the, the the loop counter from one to six okay and then the bus routes which is the array name name here so it will for the index for loop one okay for loop one we'll take the user sorry we'll take the array uh, index one so the message will appear here for the user that to input the uh, arrival minutes for bus A. Then when we loop again for the second loop, it would take, will show the bus B uh, here. And then loop three will, will show the index three, which is bus C, bus D, bus E, bus F. So what will happen here? This is going to be a variable will, that shows the bus number or bus label. And then after that, another nested, another nested loop here, that will take the uh, arrival minutes for one to twenty, and this is going to be shown here through a message: print enter bus minutes for the the uh, arrival minutes here variable. Then would be stored in its index if we are in loop one this is going to be stored in the this array index one and the, like here okay and then we if we loop again for the second loop the input will be stored in the index two index three four five and so on so th this array of 20 elements will be filled through this loop okay when we finish filling the bus a next we go for bus b and we'll do the same for bus B, bus C, bus uh, D, and E, and F. This for loop here that uh, will fill in the, the array of uh, 20 elements will be used in case that the uh, user chose to uh, enter his own set of data. But in case that the user might uh, use the data supplied we need to um, have another solution for this so this would be option two that the user needs to input his uh, set of data uh, so we'll give a choice here for the user by prompting him to press y to import from supplied data or press n for now to import uh, to input his own set of data so and then we'll declare a variable here at the beginning also uh, this variable should be like supplied or input okay as string declare okay if the if the the, the variable value is y then print you need to import uh, data and then we will uh, input the data from the table table up up there okay so this would be stored uh, inside the, the array uh, minutes array but else if the user chose to press n for now that means he is going to use his own set of data this what will happen and then at the end don't forget the end yeah.
This was the solution for task one. Um, please subscribe and if you have any questions, just uh, leave your comment and I'll uh, answer the question as soon as possible. Thank you.